Hey guys, this is Hamza and in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to avoid paying taxes legally in real estate. For those of you who may not know, I invest in real estate nationally all over the country and we have some very creative ways to avoid paying taxes. Contrary to what people believe, these are not loopholes. These are guidelines clearly given to us by the IRS. Yes, you heard me correctly, by the IRS. For generations, the rich have used these strategies in order to avoid paying taxes and real estate has become the go-to investment for people who are looking to make money and at the same time avoid paying taxes, legally of course. Now I can talk about how the US government incentivizes entrepreneurs and businessmen by allowing us to deduct any costs and making them expenses in order for us to net a lower bottom line, which results in us paying lower taxes. In today's video, I mainly want to focus on a few ways that we can avoid paying taxes in real estate specifically. The first and most common way to avoid paying taxes is to live in the property for two years. Did you know that if you bought a home and lived in that home for two years, you could defer as much as $250,000 if you were single or $500,000 in capital gains if you were married. How crazy is that? You buy a property, you live in it, let's say the property appreciates half a million dollars, you could potentially take that gain and not pay any taxes on it. <sighs> That's just crazy. The second most common way not to pay taxes on your real estate gains is a 1031 exchange. And for those of you wondering what a 1031 exchange is, I'm about to tell you. So let's say you own a real estate property and you bought it for $1 million. So you bought this property for a million dollars and now it's time to sell. So you list the property on the market and it sells for $1.5 million, leaving you with a gain of half a million dollars. The IRS now actually allows you to take that $1.5 million and roll it into another real estate investment called a like-kind investment. So as long as you take out all the money from that one deal and buy another deal, your tax is deferred, which means you do not have to pay tax on the gains that you had. So as long as you take the entire amount and reinvest it in another piece of property, you do not have to pay taxes at this time because the government considers this as an exchange, which means you're just buying another piece of property. And the best part is you could continue doing this for your entire lifetime. So you could continue doing 1031 exchanges as your portfolio grows larger. And this is what the wealthy have been doing for generations. The third most common way to avoid paying taxes in real estate is to maximize your deductions. Now, when you own a business, you're allowed to expense certain things in order to be able to survive, and those things are called deductions. Well, in real estate, you have exactly that same thing. You have a certain set of expenses you are allowed to call deductions, and what a lot of people do is that they maximize deductions. Standard examples of deductions in real estate include insurance, interest, taxes, legal fees, advertising costs, property management fees, home office expenses, or if you have an office at the property, that is considered an expense as well. Also, if you guys are driving to the property, that is considered a business expense. So you can deduct mileage, and you can also deduct any software you may be using to manage your properties. <sighs> That's a lot of deductions. Now, if you guys are enjoying this content, please remember to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm and hit that subscribe button as well. The final way to maximize your profits and to avoid paying taxes legally is to hold the property for over a year. How simple is that? You hold the property for over one year and this puts you in the long-term capital gains category. This automatically means that the tax that you would pay on the profits of your real estate sale would drastically go down just because you held it for over one year. And basically the only qualification that you need to meet for long-term capital gains is to hold your investment for over one year. That's why you'll notice there's a lot of home flippers who actually get into houses and then wait one year to sell them because their profits would be similar to if they sold them earlier but had to pay more taxes. That's it for me guys. I will see you guys next video.